How trustworthy do you think I am? I'll tell you how accurate your first impressions really are. Can you trust your first impressions? This is the University of the Netherlands. The saying goes that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. But when we meet someone new, that's exactly what we do. We immediately form a first impression. How reliable do you think your first impressions are? And do first impressions matter for how we treat others? Forming a first impression happens within milliseconds. You probably already decided how trustworthy or competent you think I am. Take a look at this image of a person's face. Would you trust this person? This image appeared so quickly, you barely had a chance to take a good look at it. But still, for most people, it is enough time to judge whether the person can be trusted or not. In this lecture, I will explain how accurate our first impressions are and why we might want to rely a bit less on them. Whether first impressions are accurate or not, they often influence our decision making. One place where first impressions can have a tremendous impact on people's lives is in the courtroom. We see that people who are perceived as untrustworthy are found guilty more often and also receive harsher sentences. So two people might commit the same type of crime, but one could receive a harsher sentence just because of the way they look. Of course, in a court hearing, there are many pieces of information that a judge or a jury can rely on. And it's not like people ignore all of this information when judging someone. But especially for cases that are difficult to judge, when there's no strong evidence or when there's some evidence that speaks for, but also some that speaks against the defendant, people often rely on their first impressions to make that final decision. But can we actually read someone's character from his or her face? The practice of analyzing a person's character based on their facial features is called physiognomy. And physiognomy has a long history, and it was already popular back in ancient Greece. Texts from 300 BC would advise the reader that generous people look pale and have wrinkled nostrils. Resemblances to an animal are also telling. A person who looks like a lion is probably also brave like a lion. But this was, of course, all pseudoscience and not based on any evidence. When I tell others about these ideas, they often laugh about how stupid and gullible people used to be. But actually, similar ideas are still widespread today. Even though people don't go around analyzing nostrils or eyebrows, many still think that they can learn something about a person's character just from looking at their face. So let's see how accurate your first impressions are. I'm going to show you 10 photos of different politicians. Some of them were found guilty of corruption and some have a perfectly clean record. Let's see if you can identify who is corrupt just from looking at their face. So for each person, you have two seconds to judge if they are corrupt. After two seconds, I will show you if you judged correctly. You can count for yourself how many you get correct. Let's give it a try. How many did you guess correctly? Remember that just by guessing blindly, you would often get five out of 10 correct. If you want to be a bit more confident that you're actually a good face reader, you should have at least seven out of 10 correct. If you guessed correctly less often than seven times, then chances are that your first impressions are not very reliable. Before this lecture, we asked some of our followers on Instagram to take part in this experiment as well. On average, they actually did pretty well. Many guessed at least 7 out of 10 correctly, but many were also less accurate. 
Over the years, we have run many experiments like the one you just participated in, where participants judge others on different dimensions, like how trustworthy, outgoing, or nice they are. In our studies with hundreds of participants judging hundreds of targets, we generally find that first impressions are not accurate. It seems like people cannot read others' character just from looking at their face. So our first impressions tend to be inaccurate. But where do they come from? What makes a person appear trustworthy or competent to us? Some of my recent work suggests that emotions play an important role. Even when you're not expressing any emotions, you're not smiling or lowering your eyebrows. So even when you're completely relaxed and neutral, people still see emotional signals in your face and they rely on these signals to make judgments about you. Two psychological processes are at play here. First, there's our oversensitive emotion detection system. We're constantly on the lookout for emotional signals. This makes a lot of sense because emotional expressions like a smile or a frown tell us important things about a person that we want to know right away. For example, if I see a frowning person, I might want to avoid them immediately. But we even see emotions when they're not there. Even when a person is not sending any emotional signals, we might detect a smile just because the corners of their mouth are slightly tilted upwards. In a way, our emotion detection system is like a smoke detector. It is very important for a smoke detector to go off when there is smoke from a fire. It is so sensitive that even things that resemble smoke, like steam, can trigger it sometimes. Similarly, we might think someone is happily smiling at us just because their face slightly resembles a smile. Or we might think someone is mean because their face looks angry to us, even when they're not angry at all. Second, there's our tendency to overgeneralize. When we detect a smile, we not only think that this person is happy right now, but also that this person is happy, sociable, and nice in general. Again, this is because we want to make sense of the world around us. We really want to know what kind of person we're dealing with. That's why even a fleeting smile or a facial appearance that resembles a smile can make us jump to the conclusion that we're dealing with a nice person. So our tendency to immediately judge someone's character based on their appearance comes from two aspects of our psychology, our oversensitive emotion detection system and our tendency to overgeneralize from emotional states to psychological traits. What we've learned so far is that we form impressions quickly, that we base our impressions on emotional signals in the face, but also that these impressions aren't very reliable. One other thing we often look at in our studies is how confident people are in their first impressions. And what we find over and over again is that many people overestimate their ability to judge a person's character from their face. They think they're accurate even though they're not. And this is important because people who are more confident that their judgments of others are correct, even when they're actually not, rely more on their first impressions when interacting with others. Let's go back to the courtroom example I talked about at the beginning. Even though first impressions are unreliable, people do rely on them when determining someone's sentence. It's really problematic because it means that people are treated differently just because they look a certain way. In a way, this is similar to other types of discrimination. People are often treated unfairly because of their ethnicity or because of their gender, but also because of their facial appearance. First impressions also play a role in many other situations. People tend to vote for politicians who look attractive and competent. Job applicants who look more competent are also more likely to be invited for an interview. Especially when we have to make a difficult decision, when we don't know much about the person we're dealing with, we often fall back on our first impressions. But there are ways to overcome your first impressions. People do update their impressions when they learn more about a person. For example, I might meet someone for the first time and think that they look very mean and arrogant. But if I hear that they donate a lot of money to charity and that everyone likes them, I will probably update my impression of them. So to circle back to our main question, can you trust your first impressions? Well, not really. 
We know people form first impressions very quickly and that they are pretty confident in them, but it turns out that first impressions are not really reliable. Still, first impressions can have a big impact, for example, in the courtroom or in elections. We need to keep in mind that it's normal to form first impressions. This is part of our psychology and it's really difficult to avoid it. However, that doesn't mean that we have to follow our first impressions. It is important to remember that our first impressions will often give us a false sense of certainty of who we're dealing with, but we can always second guess them. So my advice would be, don't be fooled by your first impressions and give people a chance to show you who they really are. Thank you for your attention.